see a couple of Joseph Yap. So if your name is not Joseph, please change it. Thank you. So this webinar is now being recorded. We will be starting in a minute. Let's try to wait for a couple of people. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to this webinar on the basics of API, APA 7th edition. My name is Joseph Yap, and I'm the current uh, reference librarian and the subject librarian for the graduate schools of business, education, and public policy. What are our expectations this afternoon? So the webinar will focus on preparing references using the APA 7th edition. So we will discuss examples from a variety of information sources. So references as practice, right? Um, or referencing as a practice, it needs to be valued from the beginning of any research because learning the techniques of it, um, of referencing is a good academic practice. So I will present common examples to help you out. Um, what is APA style? So APA, or the American Psychological Association, the style in itself was established in 1929. It is a set of procedures or guidelines that codify the components of scientific writing. It provides a foundation for effective scholarly communication. So as early as now, it is better that you familiarize yourself with referencing, whether it's APA, MLA, or other kinds of citation styles, uh, because it is necessary when you publish a paper one day. And a good referencing starts when a student correctly follows specified citation format. So a lack of attention to any detail may lead to plagiarism. Now you are here because you want to uphold academic integrity or you want to avoid plagiarism and you, you want to know the basics of APA 7th edition in your academic and research work. Okay, so the, if you are from any library, we have a copy of the APA publication manual, 7th edition. The call number is there, you can borrow. We have more than five copies, I think. And if you want to know more, about examples or reference examples, you can just go to the APA website and the, the link is there below. Okay. Now, according to a study um, by, by librarians at Nazarbayev University, the common mistake that the student has when we studied um, graduate students' um, thesis is incomplete citation. So students primarily forgot to include the place of the publisher. So if you are still using the APA 6th edition, you, you still include the place of the publisher. But in the APA 7th edition, you no longer need that one. Just delete it. Um, some students forgot to include the title of the journal, and even some of them use shortcut of the title. So you need to uh, spell it out. You know? like example, JAMA, you need to spell it out. Some students forgot to include a journal, DOI. In the seventh edition, it is very necessary to include HTTPS, colon, double backslash. It's very important. Take note of that one, okay? Now, there are components of a reference list, whether it's what kind of um, reference uh, uh, reference format is that. So for visual demonstration uh, and experience, the font size is enlarged. Okay, let's start with the author. So it's, it, it may be a personal, individual, or corporate author. So in this example, there are three authors. And then the publication date, and followed by the title of the source, and then the retrieval information. Okay, now um, in section 2.12 of APA Manual 7th edition, References, uh, it's at the end of your paper, right? Should be centered and bolded at the top of a new page. So in this example, you can see the word references is in the center and it's bold, but it's not all capitalized, only R for references. Double space and use hanging indents. So when the first line is on the left margin and the following lines are indented a half inch from the left, all right? So that's when you start making your reference list. Okay, there are different kinds of information sources or source types. 
we will talk about books and reference works, which, which include book chapters or children's sources, periodicals, it could be a newspaper article, a journal article, a magazine article, or a blog post, um, reports and gray literature, it includes government report, white paper, press releases, or fact sheets, conference works, it may be a presentation or a proceedings, thesis, both published and unpublished, and audiovisual and online media, whether you want to do a reference from an Instagram post, a Facebook post, a Twitter post, or a web page. So there. Now, just a warm up exercise now based on different kinds of many sources. So uh, in this example here by Ibrayeva AR and Regina T, then there, what kind of information source is this? Or from which material is this kind of source or citation? So you uh, remember? Uh, journal? Is it a journal? Uh, no, try again. A book? A book chapter. Oh, uh, correct. Book chapter. Who is this? <laughs> Thank you for answering. It's a book chapter, right? Now, again, if you will notice, format each reference with a hanging indent, right? Which means that the first line there of each sentence there is a line flush on the left, right? So just take note of that. It could be 1.27 centimeters or 0.5 inches. No, so there. Let's proceed. Now, this is the tip. If you will notice, go back. Um, it says on the on the last on the left last component or element of this citation is CRC Press, right? Now, in this in this cover of the book, um, when both an imprint, a division of a larger publishing company, and a publisher, which you can see on the cover of the book, it's Taylor and Francis Group, right? Use use the imprint of as the publisher instead of the publisher, okay? So in, in that example, we used CRC Press and not Taylor and Francis, all right? So just a tip. So let's continue. Now, part two. First example by Ray P. Cinderella's other shoe. What kind of reference or um, source type is this? So you will notice that after the title Cinderella's Other Shoe, there is a open and close parenthesis. So this is uh, the name of an illustrator. So when you can find this name of illustrator, usually it's a um, children's book. So Ray P is the author and the illustrator is T. Hansen and then followed by the publisher or the name of the publisher. The second example by Kalibikova. What kind of source type is this? It's a book again. Yeah, correct. This is just a book, not a book chapter, right? Because if we go back to the first example, uh, this is a book chapter because you can see there first are author names and then you can find again in S. Liebert, which are the editor names because you can find on a parenthesis EDS meaning editors. But on this example, uh, this is just a translated work originally uh, written in Kazakh language and then there's a translation in brackets, the Noble Heritage of the Kazakh People's Education published by Baur. Or how, how do you pronounce it? Now, just general notes, okay? In the seventh edition, remember the following. So no place of public publication is omitted, deleted. The list, the author names can include 20 authors. So what happens if there are more or more 20 authors? So let's say on the 19th author, I, I will explain later, there's another example. And then the words retrieved from for online sources, resources are no longer needed, deleted. And the DOI format should include this format, HTTPS, colon, double slash, doi.org slash, the DOI number. And then in seventh edition, it's, um, aside from Times New Roman 12, you can use Calibri, you can use Arial, you see the Sans code in charge. You can use all of them. What else? So now start. 
books and reference works with more than 20 authors to first uh, source site. So in the seventh edition, there are 20 authors. What happens if there are 20 or more? What we'll do on the 19th author, put an ellipsis, three dots, dot, 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 and then no ampersand or no, no end sign, and then include the, the last author. So if there are 40 authors, the, la the 40th author, like 19th author, dot, 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 and then the last author, okay? So that's, that's the, how you refer to it. Now, um, the other examples, like for this, the first one is a, is a whole authored book by Beck, Burke and Temarzo. But check the second source. It's from a dictionary uh, with, with no publication year. But you will see there, we mentioned in the general note, do not put retrieval, or the word retrieved. But in this example, there is. Why? Because dictionary terms can change and be updated over time. This is just the exception only for dictionary terms, okay? So remember that, only dictionary terms with the word retrieved and then the date, the time when you retrieve it, followed by the URL or the source, all right? Now, for periodicals, there are many kinds of periodicals. It could be a journal article, it could be a magazine, it could be a newspaper or a blog post, right? Um, if it's done regularly, daily. So for example, the first one, this one is uh, by Aman Kolova. So published in 2018, 2018. And then the title, and then the source, the International Journal of Multidisciplinary Perspectives. And then the, uh, what you have to uh, remember, right? Uh, in, even in the sixth edition, the volume number is always italicized, right? So if the name of the journal and the volume number is italicized, and then it goes back to the regular one. So the number, uh, the, the issue number goes back to the regular one with, with, with no italics, followed by the page number and the POI, all right? And then the second one here, you will notice the date of public or the year of publication. Uh, it starts with the year, comma, January 27, because this is coming from a newspaper. It's published daily. So it's the title is non-cash payments increase among casa precedents, followed by the italicized word the Astana Times, the name of the newspaper, and the URL if it's online. Now, let's try to identify some errors for this example. Now we know about books and periodicals already, right? So in this example, can you look at this and observe what is is there an error or no error at all? Uh, the title shouldn't be in italics, I suppose, because it's not a journal article. Mm -hmm. What other answers do you have? There is no date. Correct. The name. No date. Okay. So the first one, um, you said, uh, is it italics versus not italicized? Um, what is the correct answer? Well, Anyone? Yeah. Well, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we should use italics only with uh, journal articles. Or okay. the name of the journal, name of, name of the journal. Ah, okay, so to avoid confusion, just to avoid confusion, if it's a book, um, if it's a whole authored book, I mean. So this is correct. You, ha you should italicize the title of the book. But if it's a book chapter, you will italicize again the name of the title of the book and not the chapter type. And it, it's the same for journals, Jour name of the journal, title of the journal instead of the name of the title of the article. All right. Now, what other errors? There's one uh, error. The place, the place of publication is no All longer right. needed. Right. And DOI is usually for uh, journal articles and not for books. And as far as I understand, this is a book, right? Uh -huh, correct. Oh, no. Um, just to avoid confusion, there are also books in book chapters with DOI, okay? Um, if, if the book or the book chapter contains a DOI, you can include it, okay? If there's none, it's fine, okay? So that's why it's very important uh, on the last part when someone checks your reference list, they will really check it online if there's a DOI for the book or the book chapter. So you have to check it really. Now, I just saw one error. It's just because of the double Ds here. 
what the correct here, this is the correct one. Does uh, forgive me because on the DOI, the HTTP, it, it does the double Ds, the DOI. So I'll just remove one D there. So here, and uh, yeah, correct, no place of the publisher. So there, one more. Here, can you see any errors here? No, there are no errors. Correct. Yeah, no correct. No errors, correct. So now we continue, we proceed with reports and gray literature. Gray literature, these are items sometimes we don't um, open or we don't read sometimes. It's just there, but we need it for reference as a source. Um, let's say probably there's a new policy or a new law, so we need to reference them as well, right? So in this example, the first one, if you will see on brackets, it's, it's mentioned leaflet. The word leaflet can be replaced with brochures as well. So if there is a brochure that you use for your thesis or for your any report, then you can uh, reference like this literature, okay? Um, the next example is, uh, is a report, the national report on the state and development of education. Remember also that when you are uh, referencing, um, there are items that you need to capitalize, proper names, and items that you don't need to capitalize, especially in the title, okay? So you know proper names or proper nouns, common nouns, so be careful with that as well. All right, so let's proceed. Um, conference works, there are presentation and there are conference proceedings, right? In this example, you will see on brackets, if you can find something like this, just mention it's a conference presentation. So if you found it online, put the source and then put conference presentation in brackets. Also observe the, the year or, or the date of publication, right? So it starts with the year followed by the month and the day, all right? So be careful with this as well. And the, um, if this is online conference, it's the same with, a, with an in-person conference. So you do the same kind of referencing, all right? Now for proceedings, there are many ways how to do it depending on the kind of material. If it's like, if it's the proceedings is published like a journal or the proceedings is published as a book, then you follow and check the manual. In this example, we are following an example of a journal here. So um, you put here the title of the, uh, the presentation or the paper, sorry, the title of the paper. And then it, it comes from the proceedings of the ninth duration academic libraries and the place and then the pagination or the pages and the link, okay? Now for thesis and dissertations, there are two types published and unpublished, depends. So if it's published, if you can find it in a repository, if you can find it in a database, for example, like ProQuest, digit, uh, dissertations and thesis, then you can do like this, they, they are all published, right? So for example, for the for, for Daulet Bayeva, then you can find this in your repository. So you need to include whether it's a master's thesis or a uh, doctoral dissertation in brackets, master's thesis comma from which university, um, doctoral dissertation comma from which university, and then include the, for example, for Nazarbayev University, include it's coming from Nazarbayev University repository. If it's from a database, include ProQuest dissertations and thesis global. If it has a URL, then include it as well. Now for unpublished, there are times that you cannot find them. They are like gray literature too. Now you, you really don't know that they are existing, but they are there. In this example, this is an unpublished master's thesis. You cannot find this in our repository because there are restrictions sometimes. So by research, you found out that this is existing. So put in brackets, unpublished master's thesis. Uh, what's it uh, for if it's singular it's thesis t-h-e-s-i-s -E -S. if it's plural t-h-e-s-e-s -E all right now examples of audiovisual and online media for example uh youtube video you want to use them so i'm i'll be using different examples coming from world health organization now spell it out don't put w-h-o put world health organization the whole okay and then if it's an online media, then you put the 
the, the year and then the, the, the month and the day, the title in brackets because it's video, video. And then the name of uh, where you got the source, it's from YouTube and then the URL, okay? So there. And then the next one is a web page, all right? So here, uh, difference between a web page and a website, okay? If you are trying to refer a website as a whole, you don't need to refer it. Just put it in the in-text citation, in parentheses, www.nasarbaya, uh, what is it? <laughs> New, that edu, that kz, something like that. Uh, in open and close parentheses, okay? You don't need to refer it. So in this example, it's a web page, all right? So it follows the same. So the title of the article in the web page and then the URL, all right? And then the next is uh, Facebook. If you wanna use Facebook, let's say. So it's the same World Health Organization and then the publication time and then title of the Facebook video, Facebook image, in this example, in brackets. Remember, in Facebook, there's a kind of tricky one. You need to put the first 20 words of the post as a title. Usually, when there's a status, there's no title. But you, as a title, you need to provide the first 20 words of the post. So in this example, you have to count, really. Health and care workers have been on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic, but are often underprotected and over ex overexposed why but uh, i counted it day so 20 words right and then in brackets video attached and then another bracket status update from facebook and then the url of the source okay uh, i think there are questions but let's see. now questions msc's title copyright after wait let let's go back to the thesis question correct sorry for this right uh yeah so in this example there is an error here um exploring research in kazakhstan universities colon exploring my bad should be capital e okay the first word after the of the subtitle uh, of the second title so it should be i will revise this it should be capital e thank you for that one and then let's proceed now okay um let's do some activity so i, I hope you can even if you're not following the indent or hanging indent or maybe you can show it to me by just in the chat box let's see um for this example it's a PQDT open, it's from open dissertation. Um, can you like do some quick referencing of this source? Is it small? Let me- Excuse find. me, could you send the link in the chat? Yeah, yes, I will now. Thank you. Yeah, there, there's the link um, and open it and I'll give you some time.
Uh, sorry, Joseph, could you please show us the slides with the references, you know, with the thesis? Yep, this one. Yep, thank you. For the subtitle, it should be, first word should be capitalized. Are you ready? Five more seconds. Okay. Okay, let's move on. So this is the correct answer. I've seen some answers is sent to us. Thanks for that. And this is the correct one. Um, so um, there's a difference between ProQuest digital dissertation and this one is open. So the, these are, those are two different databases because this is an open access one. And the, the name is uh, PQDT Open. It's really written like that. So when you want to refer to this, um, and I saw one answer with incomplete um, um, name, meaning uh, you have to mention the other name, which is the E. So Statkowski ME, 2014, and then the title, and then the publication number, and it's a doctoral dissertation. So it could be like this, all right? And then the second one, oh, sorry. I have another one like this. Um, if you can do a quick also referencing of this 
information source. So if you want, I will also give to you the link. So that's the link. And if you can maybe practice a little bit about this. Um, I, I am not sure if you are familiar with Vimeo. So it is like a video sharing platform um, similar to YouTube. So there. And thank you for the answers given by Air Daulet and Aida. Thank you. I hope others are also working on this. Uh, sorry, could you please again share as the, the slide? So, with... Okay, I will go back to the YouTube example. This is any examples. One more. Hold on there. So this must be an easy one. Are you ready to share? Okay, thank you. Your download is so fast. Thanks. Yeah. Could you please wait one, one second? Yeah, sure, sure. Just um, yeah, uh, sure. One minute, and then we will proceed. Yeah, this is correct. Let's just not um, check the italics, but this is okay. Um, uh, just one comment, um, um, because COVID-19 is a disease and the proper way to spell it is uh, cap, all caps, COVID all caps, and then comma 19. Okay, I just uh, copy paste it from the uh, website itself. Yeah, no yeah, so we will be careful with that one next time. Thank you for sending also, Aida. I saw that one already. Um, so we will proceed now. And let's try to show you. So where are you now? Four. Yeah, here. Here's the correct one. Thank you for the answers. Now, if you are from Nazarbayev University, there is somehow an easy way to copy and export EPA from EPA. So in your libraries, let's say you're using also another platform or you're using the same discovery service provider, then you can just, you know, copy and paste the citations. For, ex for, for this example, you can just click on the right side. If you will see there, there are different options or features. You can click their sites, right? And you, once you click the word site, there are different kinds of format. 
but be careful that you have to reformat it again depending because there are errors that we can find here and also you can export them aside from citing using the export manager so if you are using um endnote or zotero or maybe mendeley then you can extract it and export it to your um, whatever kind of um, citation manager you are using. So those are the examples, an easy way to do that. We are not going to talk about how to do it because there is another workshop for that and we can provide it again in the future. So there is a libguide that we created and one example I have to change later on because we found one error. So we will be revising it. And if you have questions or clarifications, can just email or contact me. And if you're from NU, I have my consultation hours, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, 2 to 4 p.m. Any questions now? No, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So that's our workshop for today. I hope you learned something and uh, have a great day. Thank you too. Bye. Bye. No questions. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you. Goodbye.